Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's again a joy even to meet you through the small time of meditation. Even today, for today's meditation, I want to begin with a statement. The way you pray determines the way you live. The way you pray determines the way you live. Our prayer determines our life. Uh, I want to back my statement with an instant from the word of God. When you look at Acts chapter 3, we see an extraordinary miracle happening. Peter and John uh, doing something at a gate called Beautiful when they made a layman walk, a layman, a man who was lame since his birth. So the moment such an extraordinary miracle happened, flocks of people started coming towards them. People started listening to them. People started hearing them. People started repenting of their sins and started coming um, to the flock of God. So when this happened, when this particular thing happened, the then church leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the elders of the synagogue, they all got agitated. They were very upset because people were going towards Christ and not towards them. They were, they were uh, changing the way of life from religion to becoming a Christ follower. Uh, so when this happened, they got so oppressed that when you look at Acts chapter 4 and from verse 17, they gather together and they decide something. This is the, this is the exact word that is used uh, in the NKJV Bible. It says, let us severely threaten them. Let us severely threaten them. The message says, let's silence them with threats. Uh, so let's keep them from spreading their propaganda. That's what the NLT says. The contemporary English version says we will warn them never again uh, to speak. So this is how the different versions say. So basically they were very severely threatened and what were they threatened of? They were said that they, if you look at verse 18 that they were commanded that they should not speak or teach in the name of Jesus. So when this happened, uh, Peter and John right in front of them, they weren't very scared of them. They just replied it saying that uh, should, should we obey God or should we obey you? Uh, so after all this happened, uh, they were further threatened. Look at verse 21. They were further threatened. That's what the word says. They were further threatened and uh, but they couldn't punish them because the people saw the glory of God. People saw the miracle of God. So they were just threatened and they were sent off. So when these guys came, when these guys came out, when you look from verse 24 onwards, they uh, they go into the presence of God or they come together. The, the Bible says that they raised their voice with one accord and started praying. They said, Lord, you are God who made the heaven and the earth. Uh, so they start from David. They move on to Christ and they all, they all pray. And in their prayer, they use one word. Uh, and that is what I want to talk about. And one of their lines in that prayer, you remember my statement? The way you pray determines the way your life is. Uh, our prayer shows our real character. What was that one particular line that is key to our meditation today? Acts 4.29, they, they, they pray like this. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants with all boldness that they may speak your word. In other words, they are saying, Lord, make us brave enough to speak your message. There has been a threat to their life. There has been, uh, they were threatened and they were further threatened. You know, that's what the verse says. They were threatened and further threatened. 17, they were threatened. And verse 21, they were further threatened. And in you and if you and I, we are going to pray under such circumstances, you say, Lord, protect us from these threats. Uh, Lord, change the hearts of those people. But these guys, these apostles, these disciples, they didn't pray for that. They prayed, Lord, give us fearless confidence in preaching your message. Lord, give us boldness to preach your message. Lord, make us brave enough to speak your message. Lord, give us the full freedom to declare your message. Enable, among their threats, enable us. Enable your servants to speak your message with great boldness. Dearly beloved, many times our prayer should not be always on the defensive side. Sometimes we need to pray even on the offensive side. You know, 
uh, I am a f- I am I watch soccer a lot. I watch football a lot. And uh, one of the terms in playing football is parking the bus. Parking the bus. You know, when a team is down with confidence, uh, they give the coach puts lots of defenders in front, and he makes they play defensively such that the ball does not come to the goalkeeper. Instead of going on the offensive, instead of using more centre forwards on strikers, sometimes it is all about defenders uh, playing the game and that is called as parking the bus. Many times in our lives, when something goes wrong, we park the bus, we get defensive and we don't move in offensively. We don't move forward. The centre forwards in our life, they lose their value and we get more defensive. Yes, there is a time when we need to be defensive. I am not saying it is wrong to be defensive. You know, when there was a crisis, God hid Elijah. God hid many men of God. God hid Jeremiah. There was a time when even Christ hid himself. There were times when Apostle Paul hid himself. I accept all that. But at the same time, there are times in our lives where we need to move forward. We need to be like Joshua's moving forward in spite of Canaanites being there, in spite of giants being there. We need to have that spirit of Caleb where we will say, with God, we will conquer. Just give us the boldness with God. Now today, dearly beloved, I do not know what your situation is. I don't know what you're going through. But today I want to tell you, the prayer of those disciples in that early church, in spite of persecution and threat, was this, Lord. Give us great boldness in preaching the word. Can that be your prayer too? Lord, grant me the boldness in preaching your word. And I'll tell you something. God is good enough to give you that boldness, to strengthen you so that the enemies who saw you will be shocked. In fact, the Bible says at the end of that prayer, It says they were all shaken. The place where they assembled together was shaken. They were they were all filled by the Holy Spirit. Whatever it might be, whatever you're going through, don't park the bus. There is a time to park the bus, but not always. Sometimes move forward and say, if I die, I die, but I'll go and stand before the king. I will go and stand before the king. That's what Esther did. My God is able to save me, even if he doesn't save me. We are ready to walk through the fire. That is what Anani Amishave Lazaria did. Yes, beloved, I want to present to you this thought that had been in my mind since morning. Lord, give me boldness to face each day. Make me brave enough to face each day. And I'm sure God will do it. Stay blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.